Hello and welcome to the channel. I'll let you know now that if you end up enjoying this video, I think you'll really like my mission-inspired walnut console table build video as well. Now let's talk about this project. If you watched my video building a joinery bench, you already know that I received a bunch of old air-dried cherry from a friend when it was left behind in an old shed at a house he recently bought and moved into. I'll be using more of that same wood for this build. You'll notice as I'm breaking down the material that a lot of the sapwood and even some of the heartwood had been thoroughly enjoyed by insects, so there was a lot of waste cut off that had contributed to multiple campfires for my family and I. After getting all my lumber milled and cutting the table legs to the correct thickness and width, I use my crosscut sled to ensure that one end is perfectly squared. I then use a stop block clamp to the sled to cut the other end of each to ensure both square and equal length for all four legs. With my joinery laid out, I can begin cutting the mortises at my joinery bench using a chisel and, unfortunately, my rubber mallet. I have since picked up a pair of brass joiners mallets that do a much better job, but this still accomplished the task. I also set my calipers to a depth of 1 inch so that I could check my mortise depth and ensure I cut them deep enough to accept my tenons. A combination of the shop vac and smaller chisel helped me clear out the waste throughout the process. This is the first project that I cut all the mortises completely by hand, and also the first project that I was able to use my new joinery bench, which you can see how I build that in a separate video on my channel. I learned a few things. First, the joinery bench performed exactly how I wanted it to. Second, I enjoy hand chopping mortises. And third, if I actually want to get more projects done, I do want to eventually get a domino joiner. I cut my tenons on the table saw using a combination blade because my only dado stack is currently at a local shop being sharpened, so this process took about 10 times longer than it normally would. I snuck up on the fit, checking for the correct depth of cut each time I adjusted the blade until I had the right depth of cut off camera. I cut curves out and then used a chisel to clean up the tenons, which did end up saving me a little bit of time. Once the tenons were all cut to the correct thickness, I went back to the table saw to cut them to their final width. After a successful dry fit, I laid out all my pieces to ensure a quick and smooth glue up of the tabletop. While the tabletop glue dried, I began cutting the mortises in the legs to accept the skirts. I waited until the top was together so I could lay the legs and skirts on the top while it was drying to ensure that all my math was correct before proceeding. Since there would be two panels of glass in the tabletop, having the skirts end up too short was not an option. I then applied a half inch round over to the bottom outside edge of each of the four skirts to give them a softer look. For the legs, I used my mini block plane to apply a chamfer to each of the four corners. Yeah. 
Clamping them back in the moxon vise at an angle, I added a tapering profile down to the bottom of each leg. I'm sure there's a name for this style of leg, but I have no idea what it is. Once they had all been sanded down to the final grit, I glued the shorter skirts into the legs as sub-assemblies, to make the glue up of the longer skirts go more smoothly. This way, I only had to worry about clamping pressure in one direction at a time. After using a rabbiting bit in my palm router to allow the two glass panels to inlay into the tabletop flush, an operation I clearly failed to hit record before doing, I squared the corners with a chisel carefully to avoid chipping the coffee tabletop. Once the recesses were completed, I used the palm router to put a light chamfer on the top of the tabletop and a much deeper chamfer achieved through some multiple passes on the bottom of the tabletop. This is probably my favorite tabletop edge profile right now. For the first time in quite a while, I'm using a film finish on this project. I had some General Finishes seal a cell that I applied as the base coat and followed it with three coats of General Finishes armor seal. The first time I used these products, I did not apply them correctly and of course was not happy with the result. After hearing Mark, Matt, and Shannon discuss it on the Wood Talk podcast, I decided to give it another try and was pleased this time with how it turned out. As you will see at the very end, it also came very close to allowing me to match the furniture that was already in my father-in-law's game room where the table will live, though this was actually not the goal. Before you get to see the final glamour shots at the end, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing as it goes a long way to making it worth my while to produce future content. Links to the tools I use and Fernwood Farms merchandise are in the description below. And don't forget to follow me on the social medias of your choice for more frequent updates on what I'm working on. And here it is. I took some pictures of it in our living room before our graphics team, my wife, applied the logos of my father-in-law's favorite sports teams to the glass, and then got a couple pictures once it was in its final home. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.